Exodus 39, you read here about the high priest's garment that was necessary for him to wear in order to get atonement for Israel's sins. And we're told that it was made for glory and for beauty. And it is a very glorious garment with precious stones, etc. on it. And the detail is added that it should be made in such a way that it should not be torn. Well, when the Lord Jesus died, the one thing that he had that was of any value was his toga, that what was his garment. And the soldiers, who I guess were half drunk, took it from him and sat at the foot of the cross and threw die to see who was going to get it. Because they said, oh yeah, it's woven from the top throughout. Uh, yeah, let's, let's not rip it apart, let's just gamble and see who gets it. He was covered with blood and spittle. He had had the crown of thorns on his head that would have pierced that net of nerves that are just beneath the scalp. There would have been profuse bleeding down his back from that. He was lashed, his back ripped to shreds, blood everywhere, and we're told after they did that, they put his own garment on him. That was covered in blood, covered in spittle, covered in sweat. And he had said just before he died that his death was going to be his sanctification. That there on the cross he was going to do priestly service. Isaiah 53 is clear about that as well, that the Lord in his time of dying would make intercession as a priest for our sins. That garment, probably knitted by his mother, covered in blood and spittle, ripped, damaged, was the equivalent of this garment of glory and beauty. You see, God's view of glory and beauty is not the view of this world. We are fools for Christ's sake. There is a complete inversion of values, a turning of everything upside down when it comes to how God sees things, that your foolishness and your dumb position in life and you holding on there in faith and in hope in God's dear Son. That is glorious in his eyes. In the eyes of the world, you're a loser. But in God's eyes, you've won. The man dying alone in his flat of lung cancer, alone and rejected by everybody, but clinging on in faith, surrounded in glory. 